Hello learners, welcome to NIOS studio. This program is based on senior secondary chemistry course. I'm Dr. Alka Mehalotra. We'll discuss lesson five, the gaseous and liquid state. In our previous program related to lesson five, uh, we discussed about types of intermolecular interaction of forces and various gas laws. Now we will discuss kinetic molecular theory of gases and liquefaction of gases. The objective of the program is Dalton's law of partial pressure, kinetic molecular theory of gases, liquefaction of gases. Now let's start with Dalton's law or partial, of partial pressure. It was stated by John Dalton in 1801. It states that the total pressure exerted by the mixture of non-reactive gases is equal to the sum of partial pressure of individual gases. So, we can see here that if we have three different gases, A, B and C, they have their own pressure. So, this is known as a partial pressure and when we are combining them, we get a total pressure. Now, let's discuss this mathematically. As you have seen in the picture that partial pressures were there for different gases and when we combine it, we get a total pressure. Now, by taking this information, we have total pressure, we can say that P1 plus P2 plus P3, that is a partial pressure. And we are keeping constant temperature and volume. We know that ideal gas equation is PV is equal to NRT. So now we can also write P is equal to NRT upon V. Okay, this is for the total one. Now let's take one by one for each. When P1 is there, we can say N1 RT upon V. Why are we not changing this? Because you know that this is a constant. So we are changing only the number of moles. As you have seen in the picture, the number of moles were different. So we can say for the first gas, P1 is equal to N1 RT upon V. For the second gas, P2 is equal to N2 RT upon V. And the third gas, P3 is equal to N3 RT upon V. These are the partial pressure. Now, by taking this equation, let's put the values of these P1, P2, P3 in the main equation. So we can say that P total is equal to N1 RT upon V, N2 RT upon V and N3 RT upon V. Now dividing, now we have this as a total pressure. Let's divide this P1 by total pressure. So what are we going to get? As you know that N1 is there RT upon V and for this also RT upon V will get cancelled because the values are same. So what we will get is N1 upon N1 plus N2 plus N3. How are we going to get this? This is the total pressure because in the totality we get all the gases with different number of moles or when you add all we can simply say N1 upon N. For pressure to uh, for uh, P2 also we can say N2 upon N. For P3 we can say N3 upon N. Now we can also write P1 is equal to X1 P total. Now what is X here? X is a mole fraction. Now we can say P1 is equal to X1 P total, P2 is equal to X2 P total and P3 is equal to X3 P total. This was described by uh, Dalton's. Now next is kinetic molecular theory of gases. To explain the behavior of gases theoretically, Clausius, Maxwell, Boltzmann made the various assumption. Now for the first thing, first assumption was gases consist of large number of tiny particles 
called molecule that we are familiar with that that all gases are made up of molecules. Now second is the gas molecules are so small and so far apart that the total volume of the molecule is negligible fraction of total volume occupied by gas. We can uh, describe this by taking the example of compression. As we know, as this law states that the volume is very, very high. So because of that, we can compress the gas. So the compressibility, you can relate the compressibility with the second postulate of kinetic theory. Then third is the molecules are in the state of constant, rapid and random motion colliding with one another and with the wall of the container. When they are colliding with each other, that is why we say that gases do not have any shape because continuously they are colliding with each other. They are continuously in the motion. So they do not have any particular shape. Then the fourth is there is no attractive or repulsive forces between the molecules of the gas. Now here first think about liquid. Now liquid what happens? We can say that attractive forces are there between the uh, liquid. I will give you one very simple example. Whenever water spills on the table and we want to, we try to put a line along with that water, we find that the line can be made. Why? Because there is an attractive force between the molecule of the water. Can we do the same thing with the gas? No, we cannot do. Why? Because there is no attractive or repulsive forces between them and that is why when we are filling uh, uh, air in the balloon, balloon get burst and the gas comes out. If there is any attraction, definitely the balloon will remain with the same shape. So we can say that there is no attraction or repulsion between the gaseous molecule. Then fifth postulate is the collisions of the molecule among themselves and with the wall of containing vessel are perfectly elastic so that there is no loss of energy during collision. Now, we can say this, that what is the meaning of first elastic collision? Elastic collision means on hitting, the exchange of energy will be there, but there is no gain or no loss of energy. The gain of energy will be equal to the loss of energy for the other molecule. So this is known as the elastic, perfectly elastic uh, vessel. Now then, the pressure exerted by a gas is due to the bombardment of the molecule on the wall of containing vessel. Here also we know that uh, when, you, uh, when you try to uh, catch or try to uh, put the gas in one of the container, they always try to, to apply the force on the wall of the container. Why? Because the molecules are very far apart, they just collide with each other and they try to apply the force. And the last one is the kinetic energy of a gas is directly proportional to the absolute temperature of the gas. Now here, if the temperature is more, the pressure will increase. And we can say uh, the temperature is more, kinetic energy will be uh, higher. Reason is when we are giving more temperature to that, so the molecules will be agitated and they will start moving here and there. So the kinetic energy will be more. If the kinetic energy is more, they will try to apply the pressure on the wall. So we can say the temperature is also directly proportional to the pressure. But all the gases do not behave ideally. So the gas law mentioned are strictly valid for ideal gas under all condition of temperature and pressure. Real gases show deviation from these law at temperature and high pressure. So what are the deviation? Real gas is a gas which does not follow the ideal gas behavior under all condition of temperature and pressure is called the real gas. Here, we can explain this with the factor which is known as a compressibility factor. 
deviation from the ideal behavior can be measured in terms of compressibility factor. So when we say PV upon NRT, that is the ideal gas equation, it is equal to Z. So for the ideal gas, Z should be equal to 1. There should be unity. So we can get a straight graph. But real gas do not follow the ideal gas behavior and they do not show the value equal to 1. Now thus, the straight line obtained for the ideal gas when V versus pressure graph is plotted but for the real gases, different curves are obtained. Now gases deviate from the ideal behavior due to the following faulty assumptions of kinetic theory. First is, uh, as per uh, kinetic theory, it was volume of molecule of gas is negligibly small in comparison to the space occupied by the gas. But contrary to assumption, one, the volume occupied by molecule of gas becomes significant at high pressure. As I have shown you with the syringe example, when we are applying pressure, the volume will become lesser. So we can uh, see that there is a significant volume of the gases are there. And the second uh, faulty postulate was that there is no force of attraction between the molecule of gas. Now this too doesn't hold good as at high pressure molecular interactions start operating and gases can be liquefied. Now, so we can say that gases can be liquefied and the liquefaction of gases comes in the process. Now, how can we liquefy the gas? Gases can be liquefied easily by increasing pressure and decreasing the temperature. You must have heard about LPG, which is liquefied petroleum gas. So what is the meaning of that? Meaning is the gas under high pressure and low temperature come in a cylinder and that is liquefied. So the molecule of gas forcefully brought together to fit in the gas. Now here we have few terms that is the critical temperature, critical pressure and critical volume. Now it may be defined as the temperature above which no gas can be liquefied is a critical temperature. You cannot liquefy any gas at any temperature. There should be a certain temperature at which the gases can be liquefied. Same goes for the pressure. You cannot apply any pressure and you just liquefy the gas into the liquid. No. At critical temperature, the pressure needed to liquefy a gas is known as critical pressure. Same goes with volume. The volume occupied by one mole of a gas at critical temperature and critical pressure is known as critical volume. Now let's revise what we have done. Like most of the gases deviate from the ideal gas behavior. First, we have learned about the ideal gas. We know the ideal gas equation. Then we have noticed that most of the gases do not follow the ideal gas behavior. So the deviation of the gas from ideal gas behavior is due to the wrong assumption of kinetic molecular theory. Real gases can be liquefied under appropriate condition that you know that critical temperature, volume and pressure should be there. In liquids, the molecular force are quite strong as compared to the gases but weak enough to allow the molecules to move within a limited space and the intermolecular distance is short. Thank you.